But by the time she was one, um, things started to be going a little bit slower in the progression. Um, and so luckily I had a great pediatrician who really listened to me and thought that we should get early intervention. Um, and so we had her evaluated for early intervention and she re started receiving services and her progression picked up and she started doing really amazingly well. Um, and so we weren't concerned after that for um, about six months. Um, at, at 18 months, she her gross motor skills were really falling behind um, her peers. And again, we went to our pediatrician and um, he referred us to um, to some some physical therapy to get some more physical therapy because she had um, some very tight heel cords. Um, and so for about six months, we tried um, different interventions to help with her heel cords. We tried serial casting, we tried um, Botox injections, um, and nothing really helped the tightness in her heel cords. And so um, the doctor, our pediatrician, finally thought, well, maybe there's a neurological reason why her heel cords. I've never seen heel cords this tight before. And so he referred us to a pediatric neurologist. Um, and so when she was two, we went and saw the, the neurologist. Um, and she evaluated Jessie and thought that, yes, she's behind. Um, and so did a bunch of testing for... Um, some very common um, genetic conditions, and those all came back negative. Um, and so she thought that maybe Jesse had some mild form of CP. And um, my husband and I went home and we talked about it, and we thought, this, okay, this is something we can deal with. Um, you know, she might have some difficulties, but we can deal with CP. We had a brain MRI done right before um, she was about two and a half and it came back um, significantly abnormal. Um, and actually, the radiologist had recommended testing for mucopolysaccharidosis, or MPS. Um, and that was the first time I had heard of MPS. Um, and so we didn't know what type. Um, and we went home, and of course, I read on the internet all about MPS and the different types. And, um, and I knew, as soon as I read it, San Filippo syndrome, I knew that's what she had. Jessie had a lot of energy when she was a toddler, and that was one of the symptoms of San Filippo syndrome. Um, she was also very social. Um, she loved her books. She loved videos. Um, and these were all symptoms that I read about, um, about for San Filippo. Um, and then also the delays, um, the delay in language development, the gross motor delays, um, they fit. Well, once, once a doctor had told me about MPS and I read about all the different types of MPS, um, she, her symptoms fit best with San Filippo um, syndrome instead of the other types. Um, so yeah, when the neurologist, she had us, you know, she had us come in and just said, yes, I'm uh, just having you here to confirm that it is MPS3 San Filippo syndrome. And um, she told us that you know, this, these were going to be the best years of Jesse's life, right? That we were living them. And not to read too much about what was going to come next, um, but just to go home and enjoy her. And there was really nothing we could do other than as she started to have symptoms later in life, we could try to support her through that. But that there was no treatment or cure or, or anything really that we could do at that point.